。明けましておめでとうございます。Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, it's a new year, and with that comes a new year of monster hunting goodness. And of course, to bring in the new year, we got something that we actually often do, at least recently, which is a message from Ryozo Sujimoto himself, producer of the Monster Hunter series. In this, he basically just wraps up how amazing the year has been for Monster Hunter as a whole, even with no major releases for the main series games happening this year. And he talks about what the future has in store a little bit as well, but this is for all intents and purposes just a nice check in and a bit of a celebration. Of another year of growth for this wonderful series. That said, for some reason, a lot of people seem vocally upset that this wasn't actually some sort of announcement or news drop or trailer or something for a new Monster Hunter, this or that, that they feel almost slighted that it wasn't. So they're expressing disappointment and, in some cases, even like full on annoyance. But I think anyone who has reacted this way really needs to just take a step back here and relax. Let Capcom cook. We know when Wild is coming out, or at least we know which year it is, and we know that it's going to be. Quite a while from now. We also know that we are supposed to be getting more information on the game in this coming summer, as in a few months from now, not now or anywhere close to it. Anything that happens before then will likely not be related. That said, this little video did tell us a few things and lets us infer a few others too. First, let's talk about sales and what they mean. This year alone, Monster Hunter World has sold 23 million units and Rise sold 13 million itself. That means that both of them are selling exceptionally well, even in a year without a proper new release for the series, and even more. Impressive for World itself, as Iceborne hasn't had any new content added into it for over three years now. And of course, these are the sales from the year as a whole, but I have to imagine that a good portion of that is a direct result of the Return to World event and everything surrounding that that has been going on the last few weeks since the announcement of Monster Hunter Wilds. I mean, there are tons of people rushing back into the game on consoles of all kinds, with the only version of it that we can actively check in on, though, being the Steam numbers on PC. And we've talked a good deal about this a couple of times recently, but this is actually getting. A bit silly at this point, it just keeps going further in a good way, of course. We are now officially past the 150,000 mark, with nearly 155,000 peak concurrent players within the last day, the last 24 hours, and this is literally going up as a number every single day, and it just doesn't seem to be tapering off yet at all, which is really just a great example of the fact that all it really takes to get people to play a Monster Hunter game, at least, is to remind them that it exists and is waiting there for them to open up if they want to. For proper reference, this Means we have officially surpassed the player base at the time of the Fatalis update, the Alatrion update as well, and all the way back until March of 2020, which was Raging Bracadios and Furious Rajang in a combo update. And it's worth mentioning that Raging Bracadios is one of the most memorable things that ever happened in World and Iceborne with the way that they implemented it all. And honestly, in my and many others' opinions, is in contention for the best quest at all within those two games, and at this point, probably even the fifth generation as a whole, given that Rise and Sunbreak are now over. All this to say that World has entered a sort of renaissance, a second life full of vibrancy with returning players and new players alike jumping in for fresh playthroughs just less than six years after the game originally released. And that's just so fantastic to see. The other thing that this trailer shows us, though, is that even with the fact that World and Iceborne are now a good deal older than Rise and Sunbreak, they are still selling quite a notable amount more. It is still a more popular game. This has led to a large resurgence in that one loud side of the crowd in the community that says World is good and Rise is. Is bad because it isn't world and world's good. And I have made my opinion on those types of conversations quite clear. It's fine to enjoy what you enjoy and prefer what you prefer, but putting down others for what they like instead of you is just idiotic at best and vindictive at worst. No matter what, it is pointless. The worst example that I've seen of this so far is the way that this person has been made to feel here. World is so huge now, 100k plus daily players, which is now, of course, over 150k, and everyone's dogpiling on Rise and making fun of it, calling it a Mario slash Pokemon game, which makes me feel so. So bad for singing 220 plus hours into Rise and grinding all the way up to a Matsu. Like, none of that matters. I just wasted my time playing a failed game. How do you deal with this? Okay, this is a whole can of worms to unpack on its own, but long story short, the people saying Rise sucks or any variation of that really are actually just yelling it at other people are an absolute minority. Secondly, the game has far from failed. That is a massive exaggeration. Plenty of people play it, plenty of people enjoy it, myself included. And if you enjoy the game, it shouldn't matter to you in the slightest what these people think of it. Sure, you can wish that they had more positive feelings. I wish people had more positive feelings about everything, really, but them not liking the game shouldn't make you feel like you. 
wasted 220 hours on it. If you enjoy the game and you played it that much because you had fun, then that is a victory. It doesn't matter what they think at all. That is a success and I'm happy for you. But it, it almost sounds like this was just full on fear of missing out or something like that. Just, I have to play Monster Hunter Rise because other people are playing it. And then just sort of being upset that more people are playing Monster Hunter World now for a period of time. And that's sort of a big reversal because obviously World has not had the amount of players that Rise has had for uh, the better part of a couple of years now. It's sort of crazy to see someone actually vocalizing it to this extent because while yes, I do think this person does need to change their perspective a bit and see that it doesn't matter if someone says the game you like is like Pokemon or Mario, even if it is Pokemon or Mario. If you enjoy it, then that's good for you. Keep at it. It does not matter what other people think. But aside from that, even if this is a bit misguided, it says a lot that someone can even be pushed to feel like this in the first place. I mean, it's an absolute tragedy that there is enough vitriol spilled about any game in the series by people who consider themselves to be Monster Hunter fans. And I just don't get why the divide is so serious at this point. I mean, I know why it exists, but it's just such a damn shame that people can't get over their own egos enough to just support the series they love as a whole instead of making fun of individual people for having different preferences about it all. They're not even getting mad about the game at this point, they're getting mad about the people who play it. Monster Hunter has one of the best communities out there in general, but the bad apples in the community can be really, really off-putting sometimes. Outside of that, there are two main other things that are worth talking about with this, one being that it seems unlikely we're going to have another Monster Hunter title announced to bridge the gap until Wilds. Sure, it was always a bit hopeful to presume it might be, but there were a lot of people thinking we might get like a Monster Hunter 1 re-release or something like that for the 20th anniversary of the series, and while that would have been cool, I also feel like they would have used this New Year's message as the perfect opportunity to announce it if that was going to happen. And so, with that not happening, it seems quite unlikely to me personally, though who truly knows what the future holds. Outside of that, then, we just have one of the main fixtures of the 20th anniversary celebrations, which is the vote for all players' favorite monsters that was put out. It is wrapped up now, no more voting, but they are not revealing the actual results until March, along with illustrations for the three most popular monsters from the vote. My personal guesses are it's going to be Zenogre, Gormagala, and third, I actually think we might just get Kezu just because of the meme of people wanting him in this special illustration, and I hope that's the case for that exact reason. It would be great. No matter what, I sure hope that we will be happy with what we get to see in the end, no matter the results. I hope you've enjoyed this then, and of course, let me know your own thoughts on any and all of this down in the comments below. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye Aけましておめでとうございます Monster Hunter Series Producer の追元です